Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, a weekly strategically minded Handelabra stream hosted by Lou Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch and Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at LouDolphin21 on Twitter, and on Twitch and YouTube, it's Lou Dolphin with no digits. Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, and Aeon's End are available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices, and Spirit Island will be soon available, beta, and public, hopefully, uh, later this year. And you can get the games and more info at Handelabra.com. Okay, uh, we're playing Aeon's End and One Deck Dungeon this week, and we're starting with Aeon's End since the last time I played Aeon's End, it was the follow-up to a long One Deck Dungeon session, and I just felt a bit tired. So we're going to start with Aeon's End so that I don't feel as tired uh, <laughs> while playing it. Uh, but let's see. So let's take a look at, statist at statistics first to see... Kind of get a gauge of what we need to do or play with. Uh, we've won with all of the mages... We've won against all of the villains. Uh, we have played Rageborn only twice. Maybe I should just play Rageborn. I've also only played Carapace Queen twice, but... Uh, I know one of those was with, was with John, and that was actually relatively recent. So let's go play Rageborn. Now, what should our team be? Jay has been played only once. Kadir has been played only once. Um... Should we play with more than two for once? <laughs> Maybe we'll play with tw with three so we have the wild card. And the other thing about playing with more heroes, and I only realized this when I was playing the physical game, because it actually specifies it a little more than this does, since this takes out a lot of the setup text. But when you play with more heroes, you also have more cards in the nemesis pile. Um, I don't know if it specifies it because I didn't realize that there even were different styles of cards. Because <laughs> uh, I think that, yeah, this game, like, they definitely take a lot out of setup. They take a lot of the setup out of the manual, which uh, makes sense for digital. Um, the game gets harder with more mages. So there's different elements of difficulty involved with more mages. Uh, one of them, and I'm pretty sure this is stated because it does, it still affects gameplay. Uh, when you play with three mages, each of them gets a turn and then there's a wild card in the turn order deck. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't really know. The turn order thing up there. Uh, there's still two Nemesis ones, but there's only one of each of the mages, and then there's a wild card. And when there's four mages, there's only one for each of the mage, and then two Nemesis turns. So, like, when you prep a spell, there could be three to four Nemesis turns before you actually get to use that spell. Uh, so, you are really planning super far in the future with that and that does also make certain cards that say you may cast any prepped spell probably a little more valuable not that it's not valuable anyway because casting a spell whenever you need it to be cast is nice but if you're prepping a spell and thinking gosh i'm gonna have to wait 15 turns to be able to use this spell uh you could have another player cast the spell for you and you can have it do the thing you need it to well, let's try playing with three and see how that goes. Um, so, who has been played twice? Lash has been played twice. Zazos has been played twice. Both of them are 1-1. One, one. So, it's Kadir and Jay, and neither Lash or Zazos. Let's take a look and see uh, how they work, because I'm still not 100% fam familiar with all of these. Kadir's uh, starts with one opened breach. Otherworldly Gate, activate during any player's main phase. That player may return up to three spells in their discard pile to their hand. That player may prep up to two spells to each of their opened breaches this turn. So, having more than one spell in an opened breach. That's kind of cool. 
and her gem gain one ether or any player gains one life so a little bit of heal there friendly heal Jay, uh, who is the interesting mage, has one open breach, has the vortex breach that can never be opened, but when you prep a spell there and cast it, it gives a permanent plus one damage. Spellstorm, cast a prepped vortex deck spell three times and then destroy it. And the vortex deck, I believe, consists of random cards from the supply, random spells from the supply, rather. She gets two flights, gain one ether, gain one ether that can only be used to gain cards from the Vortex deck, and she does not get a unique spell. And then, um, was, what was it between Kadir and Zazos? Was that how I, uh, I guess there's also animation speed things that I might tweak someday. Let's tweak this up a little bit. Uh, card display time... And we'll leave that as is. Music volume is actually relatively low. Wonder if I adjusted that myself. Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we'll see how a slightly faster animation speed feels. Anyway, back to on topic. Kadir and Jay. Yeah. Or no, we're playing with those, and it's between Lash and Sazos. Okay. So Lashes shuffle any player's turn order card into the turn order deck. That player suffers one damage, allowing for more friendly turns at the expense of damage starts with one opened breach and his unique gem gain one ether reveal the top card of the turn order deck you may place that card in the bottom or the top of the turn order deck and reveal the player turn order card gain an additional one ether and then zazos allies collectively gain four charges reveal the turn order deck and return the revealed cards in any order and we have one open breach and the unique spell Reveal the top card of the turn order deck and then place it back on top of the turn order deck. If you reveal the player turn order card, deal three damage, otherwise deal one damage. So that's some kind of overlap in mechanics here, mostly involving the player turn order deck, although Lash is the only one that can actually manipulate it. Never mind. So can Zazos. <laughs> what am I thinking? Uh, Lash can shuffle a player card in. Zazos can sh reveal and return cards. So there's a. Uh, differences there but um let's try lash because being able to get a player turn order card back into the turn order deck would be ridiculous you may not choose the wild card turn order card though and that is important because that is going to be relevant we're gonna go ahead and play against rageborn and we are on normal difficulty so each mage starts with 10 hp and gravehold starts with 30 and rageborn will just have 70 so rageborn Unleash, Rageborn gains one Fury token. Uh, he strikes when he has four or more Fury tokens, or otherwise when a card says so. When Rageborn strikes, the following is resolved in order. A card is drawn from the strike deck and resolved. That card is shuffled back into the strike deck, and Rageborn loses three Fury tokens. And the setup, uh, all of the strike cards are shuffled together and placed face down to form the strike deck, and Rageborn gains one Fury token. So he starts with one Fury, and he'll gain more as he unleashes. Okay. Um, let's see. So I know that I still have to hit the random button for this to work, right? I would do that to get those, but this would also. So when I played with John, he helped set up a array of things. I still kind of... I like the idea of there being random random things out there um being able to build your supply to be whatever you want it to be i just feel is i don't know um i mean you can obviously choose the individual ones i like just playing with random but do I want balanced random? Do I want anything goes random? Let's go with balanced. Balanced means everything is balanced as it should be. And we'll hit random. And maybe we'll veto some of these. I don't know. Rizwood Amber, when you gain this, you may place it on top of your deck and gain two ether. 
so you can get it and use it almost uh, much more quickly than normal. Also, the other issue with uh, more players is that your deck shuffles more, uh, less frequently, and so when you gain a card, it takes much longer for you to actually be able to use it. So a card like Rizwood Amber that I haven't really utilized too much is actually more valuable. Diamond Cluster, uh, gain two ether. If, you, if this is the second time you've gained, or if you have played Diamond Cluster this turn, gain an additional two ether. Nice to combo with. Searing Ruby, gain two ether and gain an additional ether that can only be used to gain a spell. Nice once we're fully like ready for spells. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure at what point you want to gain spells, but that's, uh, that's a good card for gaining spells. I mean, obviously you need to gain spells at some point. Um, Mage's Talisman, gain one charge, any ally gains one charge, and that's nice. It gives free charges at the expense of one of five cards. Flexing Dagger, the next time you focus or open a breach this turn, it costs three ether less, or destroy this and deal one damage. Deal two damage, any ally gains one charge. Okay, we got lots of charging happening here. Deal two damage, you may destroy a card in hand. Deal three damage and deal two additional damage for each prepped spell and an adjacent breach. Or deal two damage and deal one additional damage for each of your opened breaches. So kind of some interesting stuff there. Uh, kind of a little bit of redundancy there, I guess. But we got uh, charges, we got breaches. Um... Decent gems. I'm not sure if there's one I would rather want, but they're they work. Um, yeah, let's just go. Let's fight. Here we go. Happening. <laughs> it's wild card immediately. All right. So, who wants the first turn? It's not like we really don't expect anything here. Uh, reveal the top card of the turn order deck, and you place that card on the bottom of the top. And if you reveal the player turn order, gain an additional one ether. That might be better, so we, we know what's coming up. Reveal J. Um, and we know we've already played the wild card, so we're not going to be able to use J for a while if I put her on the bottom. But if I put her on top, like, I always feel like putting the hero on the bottom is a bit better because then we'll have a nemesis turn and then we can deal as we need to. But we also haven't done any setup yet, so it might be better to just leave her on top so she can get set up faster. And that gave us an additional ether. Um, five ether now. So this charge, we can take a turn order card back into the turn order deck. Being able to do this once per round, even though it's damage costly, um, would be nice. Because that would mean instead of there being four player turns and two nemesis turns, there'd be five player turns and two nemesis turns. Obviously being able to do this 15 times in a round would be nice. Uh, if we can afford the damage. But it's slowing down the nemesis is valuable. Um, and we can do this during any player's main phase. Uh, do I want to charge for that? Or do I want to... Gain the mage's talisman. And then I can charge that whenever I have it. Uh, the problem is if I buy the Mage's Talisman, then I can't purchase a charge right now, and I'd have to wait a while to get that, but... I don't know. Maybe I'll just get that. And by maybe, I mean I will. <laughs> Alright, and then it's... Oh my gosh, Shay's turn! Alright, so Shay is the Vortex deck. Um... That's the Shay's deck. Can I look at the Vortex? Okay, there we go. Maybe it's not random. I don't know how the Vortex deck is set up. Because I feel like I've seen this arrangement of cards before, but maybe not. Uh, two... I know, I mean, it is in order. So two Spectral Echoes, an Ignite, an Essence Theft, a Planar Insight, and two Consuming Voids. And it goes from most ex or at least expensive to most expensive. So we can get the Spectral Echo even though it's already in the supply. But that's something that we can do. 
We can get to Ignite. Do a variety of things. If we want to use this Vortex Breach, we need four Ether to, pre to uh, op uh, not open it, but uh, focus it. And then we would need... Um, or we could have the Flexing Dagger. The next time you focus, it costs three Ether less. And that would be... That would be a permanent card in Jay's collection. Let's play that. We have an additional ether, so this is kind of one less expensive. So it's two ether for this one. Kind of. Um, I think I don't want to focus this. That's too expensive. We probably just want to get the flexing dagger earlier. It costs two ether. It will make future fo foci uh, three less expensive. She's definitely going to want one. Let's get one of those. That spell's probably just going to go there. Uh, do we want to get a Brizwood Amber or a Spectral Echo? This will give her more ether that she could use to focus a little more, and she could place it on top of her deck to make her next round more potent, although she's going to have another flight happen. She also has that spark. Now let's get her spells because we're going to be able to focus with her a little more easily. So let's get spells. Spell, spell, spell. Rageborn strikes. So uh, any player suffers four damage. Okay, hello. Uh, so Emerald Shard, yeah, so any player can gain life with that. And the, I don't know if it makes sense right now who it should be. Lash can make one take self damage, but that could be anyone at some point. Let's have Jay take it. All right. So Nemesis and Kadir are left somewhere in there. We have damaged Rageborn. All right, we have two spells here. We can prep one. Um, yeah, because he starts with... Or no, he, he has three. Yeah, he has three. Okay. Okay, I see how it is. Um, if I want to use the spell, I need to either open this breach or focus or focus. I'd be more inclined to open just so that it's, it's open. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll open it. It's open. Now I have permanent two spells. Okay, play the gems. Do we need to regain life or do we need the ether? Depends on what we're going to do this turn. With four ether, and it's your first turn, so uh, let's actually go back so I can actually look at the deck. Next turn, you're going to have three ether and two spells, and it's going to be the same kind of situation as Lash. So if you want to buy something off the supply, you could do that now, or you could open the breach now. But there, you don't have an. You won't be using that immediately. You would just be doing it next turn, and then you'd have three ether next turn. So the question is really, how do I want to spend that three ether, or do I want to use four ether this round to buy something? And you also have your thing. I ignored it with J. Um, casting a prep vortex deck spell three times is ridiculous, by the way. That player may return up to three cards in their discard pile to their hand. That player may prep up to two spells to each of their opened breaches this turn. Very powerful, but uh, it is most useful later in the game, I would say, when you have lots of spells and lots of opened breaches. So she, I don't, I don't think she's in a rush to activate that, I would think. So I don't need to charge that immediately. She can't afford that. Uh, flexing dagger is only two ether, and it would make future focuses and opens cheaper. Um, I mean, Jay already has one, and she, we, I don't know if we need two on her, but she already has one. Batman cluster is expensive, but getting two of those early would give lots of spending power. Searing ruby is also expensive but can make getting spells easier. 
feel like I'm just reiterating a lot of my comments. <laughs> um, do we want that to ether? It might actually make sense to get that two ether because then I don't have to rush to open that breach. I'd have the two ether and then the three here and then a spell, and I think that would be a bit better. So I could just use this to have Jay heal, play the gems, take the Rizwood Amber, put it on top of the deck. It did that automatically because uh, I guess the game thought I wanted it there. Provoker. Gravehold suffers damage equal to the number of Fury tokens Rageborn has. All right. Uh, so yeah, we probably just want to deal with <laughs> the minion, uh, because that will make rage that will make a uh, gravehold suffer damage. We don't have any gravehold healing here. Uh, gems. Uh, I don't really want to focus that breach just yet. Um. We probably just want to get, like, as many Vortex spells. Well, I don't know that's necessarily wise to get all the Vortex spells. But uh, being able to use my my um, my focus or talent or whatever this is. Uh, <laughs> being able to use it for as many Vortex spells as possible is a strategy. But also getting Vortex spells and uh, powering them up with my breach and then casting them three times is something so I don't know but we have four plus one I can get spectral echo and a three if I wanted it um, or I could get a four so what do I want uh, that's a good spell any ally gains a charge. Is that also in your Vortex deck? It is. So maybe we'll just... We'll go for the Vortex. That leaves me with two. <laughs> also, I'll take another Flexing Tacker. Because uh, we do... Since we're getting a lot of Vortex spells, we're going to need to have Breaches. And that will help with Breaches. And I guess there was an Order to the Madness. Method to the Madness. Order to the Method to the Madness. Eh, that's fine. Yeah, because it didn't matter in this case because I was going to draw both. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so who wants to go now? This is an important question. Um, Still two Nemesis turns. Uh, can Lash get charged up? He can reveal the top card of the turn order deck and now he'll give us more information. Let's have Lash take the turn. And that will also allow us to deal two more damage to the Provoker. And then let's see what the top card is. The Lash card. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, Lash doesn't have any spells. So going again wouldn't really do too much. I mean, he could perhaps try to grind to get enough charges. So that we can shuffle a card into the turn order deck. Um, what's his next draw? It's three gems, a spark, and a spark. Um, if we gain, like, if we gain the Rizwood Amber with our, and we're gonna have what? One plus one, so it's actually five ether we have. So we can get a Briswood Amber and a charge and a charge. And the next round we would have five ether. We could charge twice, that wouldn't be enough. But if I put it on the bottom, I kind of like putting things on the bottom because it guarantees we're not going to get 15 straight nemesis turns. 
Like, the bottom two are Nemesis, and then the top two on the next round are Nemesis. That stinks. But if Flash is on the bottom, we can at least have a little bit of relief, even though he's not going to be able to really do anything there either. But we'll put him on the bottom. And then maybe someone else will do something that will benefit him, although I don't think that will happen. But charge, and who wants this charge first? Um, both of these are a bit situational. Uh, I mean, this, I mean, this, we can use this really, like, we can waste this. Um, although it's not really a, like, so it can just stay charged. It's not, like, I shouldn't say waste, but we can also do this. Um, like, if there's a large number of spells in a discard pile, we could certainly have that going. So maybe Kadir is better. Like, I want to be able to use Spellstorm but mostly after I've charged up a Vortex Tech spell. All right, so five ether. Um, trying to think, you're going to get, yeah, let's get you the Brizwood Amber and then you have two left over. Let's charge you. Because we want you to be charged as much as you can be. Nemesis turn. The player with the most prep spells suffers two damage for each of their prep spells. Why is this not going off? Oh, because you have no fury because you struck. Okay. <laughs> Zero fury. Yeah, you struck and so you removed it. So you have no fury right now. All right, so we got the bleed static. So in three turns, the player with the most prep spells suffers two damage for each of their prep spells. We also have the eye of nothing to discard, spend six ether, power to unleash twice. Okay. And that can go off. Actually, both of these could potentially go off after Lash's turn if the top two turns are or top two things are Nemesis cards. So that's not going to be too good. Gem, 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 gem. We don't have enough for that. And that's going to go off anyway. Eh. It's something to think about, but I don't know that I really want to worry about it. Five ether. And really, we would like everyone to have Mage's Talismans, because Lash can benefit off of a Mage's Talisman that an ally has. So that's probably fine to have. Oh my gosh, it's a Lash turn. Play the gems. Focus. You probably just want to always focus once. Ignite's also a good spell. Um, You don't have too many spells. You just have the two sparks. And you also have two open breaches. So you kind of want to have another spell. Uh, and this can destroy cards in hand, so we can get better cards. Yeah, so that's a good one to have. Okay, we have another power and discard three cards in hand. Now it's the wild. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. This one, the Woven Sky um, is not gonna go off this round, but it's easy to get rid of by discarding three trash cards in hand and we'll have each player have a turn before that. But uh, this one is gonna go off this round and I have nothing is also going to go off this turn and we want to spend six ether to get rid of that. Is there anyone that can do that? <laughs> One ether, two ether, three ether, so no, and that's four ether. Man, we have terrible spending power. <laughs> um, if we have one of these players go, but they don't spend their ether, they could potentially afford it. Um, Kadir has four ether, but she would have to draw three cards to get to that. Uh, and that's probably not going to make that happen. Flash is the one that is most, like that's four cards away, but if he holds on to one, yeah, that's not gonna work either. Ah! Unless this gem helps. 
but that that's assuming that we're not getting a Nemesis turn before Lash's turn or anyone's turn, so I don't know if it's actually going to help too much. Let's just have Lash take a turn, get rid of that. Each one of them could have done that. But gain the charge, Kadir gains the charge, the Kadir also gained the Mage's Talisman, so we'll uh, so that we don't waste charges, we only need to consider uh, giving some to Jay, but I don't know. So, let me double check this. Cast the prepped Vortex deck spell. So it's not the Vortex Breach, but the Vortex deck. That, yeah. And is there any distinguisher on Vortex deck cards? Um, like this was one, right? Well, is it the art? <laughs> is it the text of the card that that that's making that? Like that's bright yellow, that has some pink to it. I assume that's how we know what vortex deck cards are. Um, I mean, so this one is also going to deal two, no, this one, two damage for each of their prep spells. So if Lash preps both, of, yeah, he'll prep both of those. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but just in case, just in case this reveals a hero card or a mage card turn order card actually oh but that's not gonna work right now <laughs> I can get that charged up but I can't actually use it just yet all right fine we'll do it okay place that on the bottom actually that was a really smart thing now we know that the nemesis is on the bottom which means we have an entire round to figure out what the frick we're gonna do uh, except if I use this, then I shuffle it. So that's not really <laughs> ideal. Uh, but yeah, I can take more actions. I know, I know, I know these things. Okay, so so we know that Lash, we played his thing, so he's not going to ever have the six. But he can use this now, which might help. So we have a vortex spell and we have the flexing daggers. So I can play this to reduce this cost by one. And I can play some gem in order to prep that spell or focus that so that I can prep a spell there. There we go. And now this will get a permanent plus one when I use it. Nice. Then I have gems and I cannot afford the vortex deck spell. Um, and I can only get something with two ether. So another flexing dagger. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I can take more turn. Oh, right, because I could use that. I'm not going to worry about that. We can worry about it after uh, the last mage turn. Uh, do I, I don't really want these to be grouped together. I would like to be able to have these on separate turns so I can focus this breach. Uh consecutively so let's put it like that then Kadir um so do that player gems is three or four going to help I'm kind of not thinking I'm going to be able to deal with the eye, uh, eye of nothing unfortunately do I want four ether Um, if I get four ether, I can get ignite. So we can charge more often. Charge, charge, charge. All right. And then lash. Okay. Play gems. Five ether. Um, 
Is there anyone that can afford that? Yeah, our spending power is kind of bad. We've not been focusing on the gems at all. We probably should have. Does Kadir have the Mage's Talisman? He does. So I am going to use this, I would say, but who would be the most useful? Jay, so we can get more Spectral Echo, or more, more Vortex stuff. Yeah, let's do that. Which means it is possible that Jay will go next. Also possible that the Nemesis will go next. If I can charge that. And we need better spending power, so let's get, let's get the Rizwood Amber. And then we have this, yeah, we have the Spectral Echo so we can destroy cards with it. Increase the potency of my deck. All right, excellent. Let's do that. And we need to destroy one of these. If I destroy the crystal, I don't have spending power this turn. But I also can't really afford anything other than the flexing dagger, which I guess is nice. We already have two of those, though. Hey, Mitch Slays, how are you doing? Yeah, let's destroy the crystal. And then figure out what I'm going to do for spending power later. Uh, I mean, that, I guess... Oh, but I can flex in dagger. Okay, so uh, that makes sense. I can now put that spell there. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and that is another Vortex deck, so that's good. And this one has the permanent plus one. That's good, 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 good. Um... I have three of these. Did I buy one? N Am I dumb? <laughs> Guess I did. Okay. And yes, I did. I do notice that Jay is down to two. Oh jeez. Oh yeah, and this is going off too. Any player suffers four damage. Um. Let's give that to Kadir. Unleash twice and any player gains two charges or Gravehold suffers four damage. Oh. Well. Gravehold damage is permanent in this game. On the other hand, Fury might build up, or it will build up, which could result in Gravehold suffering damage anyway. Or the player with lowest life suffers two damage, which would be Jay, which I don't want. So I'm just gonna have Gravehold take the damage. I don't want him to strike with that. All right, so Persistent is Unleash. Okay, I see how it is. Let's uh, get rid of him then. Do we need to destroy one of these? Obviously not the Mage's Talisman. We have four ether, and we could use that to get a Diamond Cluster, so I'm not gonna destroy that. I want to get I want to get the diamond clusters going, especially on Lash, so he could charge. Speaking of charging, let's give this one to Jay. Play the gems, diamond cluster, spell, those. Okay, so this will do two, this will do one, and does that get the plus one? It gets the plus one immediately, okay. Good. So I can kill him right now. Do I destroy one of these? Uh, we can give you a Rizwood Amber if you don't. On the other hand, we would like to put a spell in the Vortex Breach, which we can do with the Flexing Dagger. And that would already use up one of the Ether. You'd have two left over, so I guess you can get another Flexing Dagger. <laughs> 18 more, kid. Now let's destroy that, and then let's figure out how we're gonna get Ether later. <laughs> I think I need to be careful that I'm not destroying all my gems so that I have no spending power whatsoever. That would be bad. Uh, but that's fine. We'll do that. We'll do that. Reduce. Focus. Gem. And then... Oh, yeah. I can also just click it and then we'll do that. Perfect. Um, yeah. Put that on top. And then it's Kadir. 
Bats. Charge. Uh, lash. Gems. Spell. Uh, you can get ether that can only be like, um, like Kadir or uh, Lash wants the diamond clusters. I suppose this would also be used from the Vortex deck. Those are spells, right? This is two ether, but straight up two ether and could be used immediately. Um. Or do I want Ignite? <laughs> uh, which we already got one of. But we're, I, we're, we're doing really bad with spending power, so let's do let's get the Searing Ruby, and then I can use that to get the Ignite later. But it has the benefit of me being able to use spend to, spend it to use two ether or to gain two ether. There are two Nemesis turn orders. Well, I guess our Fury's up to six, and a player's gonna suffer four damage, and that player is going to be Lash because he's highest. Okay, who wants to go now? Um, can Lash afford a charge or two? Yes. Do that. Play the gems. Uh, oh. Oh. You shuffled. You shuffled. That is not what I wanted. I forgot that if there's nothing in the deck, you shuffle. So I can't do the thing now. Oh well. Uh, Rageborn turn now or Rageborn turn later? Let's do it later because I can charge up and then get a turn. Or, yeah. Um, spell, spell. And I just said I want to charge up, but I actually kind of want to get that diamond cluster. Let's do that. Spending power is now a lot easier on... Uh, on Lash's side. Do that to ch ch to make that do more damage. Um, aha, this also hovers over and is purple. Whereas this is just yellow. Good. Reduce the next cost and uh, just play the gems. But focus this. And yes, I know I could just do that. <laughs> okay, we're charging up our breach, our vortex spells. Do I want to get this? I can't get that. Um, but you do need better spending power. Um, what do you have? You do not have any spending power, like, whatsoever. You absolutely need spending power, but you can't afford that. Uh, whose wise idea was it for me to destroy one of my crystals? Um... I don't think it's worth getting the fifth one. <laughs> All right, fourth one. You already have three, but your deck is thin and you can't really get anything with this. Should you just charge? We'll charge here. You could also focus, I guess. We're not really worried about these breaches as much. We really just want this to be always going. Uh, Yeah, we'll have to figure out how to fix this, but that will come later. Unleash twice. Excellent. Lots of fury. And we need to worry about keeping people healed. Any player suffers one damage, that's okay. Go out to Kadir. Okay, so damage. Okay, um, we have two spells. We're gonna play the gems, but we're gonna want a player to gain a life, and let's let that be Jay. We don't really want Jay to go out. We have two ether now, and you have two spells, so we're gonna have to focus in order to get that spell there. We know that the last card is the Nemesis card. Okay. Spell gems and you have two diamond clusters 
they are very far separated right now, though. In fact, I actually kind of not... I kind of want to not to play that diamond cluster. It will take some time for these to, to, to group up, though. We're going to have a wild turn, but we can charge this with... Well, I guess there's many ways to charge. Let's focus. And then I have one ether left over. There's nothing I can do with it. And you can also charge it yourself. You would also be able to get your diamond clusters together more quickly. So we'll do it this way. And since you have two diamond clusters, we don't need to worry about the crystals anymore. And let's give this to Jay. And... Let's shuffle a Kadir card in. Okay. Um, charge. Yeah, I just want to hold on to that crystal. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, this will charge up Lash pretty quickly, and we can um, do that, and then we can charge up Lash really quickly. <laughs> but we need to be careful with HP right now. Play the gems. I don't think you really want to hold on to them anyway. You have a spell. Um... We can charge this, we can activate it. You have one spell in your discard. Well, you can actually, you can gain a spell and then you can return it to your hand. Uh, that would be kind of funny. I think we just need more spells. I think we just really need to be more offensive right now. Um, so let's take an ignite. Start dealing damage there. Regain a hit point, I think. A four damage blow will take out anyone. Um. Not really happy about that. How many spells does Lash have? He has three. Also, what's in his hand? So we can do this and chart and use it on Lash. And then we have two left over. Let's open that. And let's end the turn. Uh, I don't want to unleash twice. And I don't want Jay to discard. And that's three damage to the player with most open breaches. Let's let that not be Lash. Okay. Um, so let's use this. Actually, before I use that, let's be smart about it. Because I can actually... Did I... Yeah, I have to undo. Let's... Let's consider gaining one of these gems, or one of these spells, and then actually casting it. Or not casting, but prepping it. Because we can gain these three spells... We can also gain a spell from here and then use this. 
to get it into my hand immediately. Uh, and actually, two ignites would basically let Kadir charge up, like, two, like, right away. Which would be kind of nifty. There. We didn't charge up anything here, but that's fine. We don't really have the HP right now to do it. This will do four. Good. Very good. Um. I think you want to keep your stuff because you're going to use your stuff. We also have two of these, which is annoying. Maybe we'll just hold on to that one, even though we're gonna get another one. <laughs> um, and you're not really going to be able to use it. You would rather just get the gems so that you can get the Rizwood Amber, wouldn't you? Well, let's play that. Let's destroy it and deal one damage. We can take him out. Because there's no guarantee as to whose turn is next. I guess it's a Nemesis turn. To discard, spend seven ether. Ouch. Okay, wild turn. Let's have Lash take the turn. Yeah, let's see if we can get him charged up. Probably can't. Um, and that's going to shuffle it if I p use it. So yeah, I'm not going to be able to use it or, uh, to get another turn this round. But we can get Kadir charged up. And do I want to destroy one of these crystals? Um... You're not going to be a charge, not going to be able to charge up to max unless this reveals a player turn card. So actually, yeah, let's 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 do this first and see if we're lucky. We are. Let's place you on the bottom because you could use your your thing on that at that time to quicken thought. Play the gems. Play the spells. You have four ether. Charge, charge. Uh, Cause these guys, you have those spells, but you might not. Actually, I guess, uh, eh. Okay. Um, you can't get that. Yeah, we have terrible spending power. Why am I trying to figure out if we can do this? We can't. Let's discard two cards in hand that each cost four ether or more, or unleash twice. Gravehold suffers three damage. This one was unleash any player suffers one damage, and that player suffers one additional damage for each fury token. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! Ow. Ugh, and your diamond cluster is not in a good spot. I think... I don't know why that is. <laughs> Did I play a diamond cluster when I shouldn't? Oh! Because they were together, but they were off by... They weren't in a... They weren't in a set of five, that's why. Ouch. Okay, um... I want Jay to take the turn so we can charge up, or not charge up, but just make this deal more damage. Yes. But I'm not going to destroy a card. I'm gonna do this. Play the gems. Um. <laughs> Still want, I want to get that, but I can't. Uh, two crystal. 
tree and then the thing. I'm in this cycle right now where I can't. All right, I want to focus this. I really do. Yeah. Even though I'm losing ether this way, but I can charge. I can't use it right now because I don't have a prepped vortex deck spell, but I can soon enough. This is slightly annoying. Um, let's charge that. And you're just gonna have to deal with. Could you put? Um, I'll worry about that later. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, we know Lash was the bottom, so that's cool. Damage. That. 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 And we can actually cast you three times. And destroy it. Sure. Although that's also powering you up each time. Dang! Dang! <laughs> Forgot. It's happening three times! Um, so actually, let's do it this way. Bash is going to have a turn anyway. We don't need to destroy the thing. So, yeah. Prep the spell. Do that. Cast it. And um, well, let's not destroy it. Your, your ether is terrible. And then do the last hit there so that Lash could take him out. I guess I could have done it on Rageborn. He's down to 30, but... That, that. Charge. And turn. That, that. Okay. So we can take you out. Hit you, and this is going to hurt, but I want to have less Nemesis turns. Are these still tier one, or are we in tier two? We're in tier two, okay. But I needed to use that so I can actually charge. <laughs> and what's your hand? You have a Vortex spell, okay. So let's give Jay the charge. Uh, let's hold on to the Diamond Cluster if we can. Gives us four ether. Charge, charge. And the turn. Okay. Play that. Um, play that. Focus. Prep that spell. Uh, now you have not enough ether to do anything. <laughs> Actually, if I was going to do that, I should have. Should have been smarter. Can't even charge that up. Oh. Um, hold on. Let me can I rewind. I can't rewind. Okay. Okay, Gravehold suffers damage. I should have remembered that I have to discard four. I didn't. Or discard two cards that cost four ether. I probably. I had several opportunities to do that, and I forgot. All right, to discard, lose four charges. Um, this is at four. It will become five, six, seven, which is 18. That's a lot of damage. I want... I want you to take a turn after you've charged up. So let's have Kadir take the turn. Because Kadir can do this and charge J, and do this and charge J, and can play that and charge. Uh, oh, it charged automatically. Prep that spell. 
Uh, and we have to just lose four charges to do that. Um, am I going to want to use Otherworldly Gate again? Well, both all of our discard piles are empty except for uh, Kadir. Uh, which I guess is exciting. But getting rid of this card and not unleashing four times I think would be better. You're just going to start saying charge. Or is it charge? <laughs> Okay, play the gems. We can buy a spell that costs five ether. Uh, we have not gotten Chaos Arc or Planar Insight yet. That's kind of tragic. Um, I don't know if it really will matter at this point because we're almost. He's at twenty-five, but Jay's gonna have a ridiculous turn. Let's just charge up so that if something bad happens, Cauterizer. Okay, the damage is dealt to this minion. Reduce that damage to one. That's something we're gonna have to get rid of, though. Um, I'm not going to want to cast that, but I can cast this, and I might as well just use it on the Cauterizer, because that's only one damage. Um, ah, I have to lose this. Ah, dang it. Dang it. Okay, well, then I guess I have to do that. Never mind. I screwed up. I screwed up. Uh, I don't want to, like, I normally don't like Spark, but this one's powered up. I don't want to destroy it. Skip. That. And that. And that. And that. I can spend, I can, I can spend, I can play my two gems to do this. I don't have a spell there. <laughs> um... I can I can't can ignite. Oh I can, because these are vortex deck ethers. Ooh. Um Yeah, let's do that, because I'm not really able to do anything else that makes me happy. Uh because this is not gonna discard in a good order. Okay, never mind, this game's not almost over. There's still more that has to be done, of course. Uh, but I can shuffle a J card back in. Probably I'm going to want to do that. This is playing with fire. I did not want that card. Whatever. It's fine. We need to keep Jay alive. <laughs> uh. All right, Jay's turn. I don't want you to lose your thing. Well, you can't really do anything with that, but I want you to get to spells. You are you can get the spells. It doesn't really matter. Um That's not good. Okay, power 1, <laughs> which means it's going to go right now. It always does. I hate this card. Every time it comes up, Rageborn has a consecutive turn. Ugh. Oh, and this is okay. This is the damage. So Jay takes the damage. This card, gem, <laughs> gem, gem, gem. Gem, gem, and this makes me sad, but, okay, Grateful can take damage. <laughs> Player with the most open breaches destroys four cards in hand or suffers four damage. Well, 
It's actually really bad because that's going to uh, kill the person because they won't have four cards to discard. Which means that Gravehold takes the damage, which means that that happens, which means he's going to strike, which means it's game over. <laughs> so I'm hitting undo because that was game over. I don't think he noticed, but that was actually game over. Um, and I guess I can't rewind that far now because, yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I think it's it's game over. I can't fix this. No, wait. No, I can't fix this. Wait, wait. Why does Jay have four cards now? I'm not sure why Jay has four cards now. Ha! <laughs> Visual glitch. Uh, but we can't. Yeah, we can't because Jay has four cards, but not the most open breaches. Um. <laughs> yeah, I can't stop this from happening. Gravehold suffers three damage, and that's game over. Oh well, we were we were close, but I kind of screwed up because I forgot that vortex spells have to be cast because the breach is never opened. Ah. <laughs> oh well. That was fun, though. We managed to get some lash action happening. We used Kadir's power once. Um, probably could have used it more. Jay, yeah, her, her. I don't know why I thought I would wait on that, but being able to cast a prepped vortex deck spell, especially if it's in the vortex breach, is really powerful because it's three times you cast it, and if it's in the vortex breach, it's a plus one each time, so it's uh, ridiculous. That's a shame. I lost the Rageborn. I was undefeated to Rageborn, and I lost the Rageborn. Oh well, I blame the fact that Rageborn had two consecutive turns right after a power one. Or right on a power one. That 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 That's just terrible. Also, I lost with Lash twice. I feel like that's not good, but... The records seem to suggest that people lose with Lash more than twice as often as they win, so I guess I'm kind of consistent with that. But... Um, I'm supposed to be a smart player. <laughs> I'm supposed to be smart. I'm supposed to have better statistics. Yeah, all of these, um, and I'm sure that part of this is that people start a game and don't finish it, or they start a game and they don't like what happens two turns in, or five turns in, or ten turns in, and then they quit. And I, I'm, I would, uh, I would imagine that if a game quits, that just counts as a loss. So I'm sure that some of these losses are just because the people didn't finish the game and that they weren't all just like unwinnable situations. And then there's of course like the average player that just plays a random card and then blames the game for not winning. <laughs> I lost because the game sucks kind of person, so. All right, so if I want to just stick with my least played sets, then I guess the next game would be Kadir, Jay, and Zazos against Carapace Queen. But it's been an hour, and I want to try to balance my time across the two games. So let's let's move on to the one deck dungeon part of the stream. It's probably better to have one deck dungeon be the second part of the stream because uh, as much fun as it is as a game, it's actually less thinking power than Aeon's End. With Aeon's End, I'm always thinking. With one deck dungeon, uh, I'm not changing the title. I'm just changing the game. With Aeon's End, I always have to be on. Whereas with one deck dungeon, I'm rolling and then I'm reacting. But after a certain while... And let's actually open one deck dungeon as well. After a certain while, you're not, it doesn't really, like, you build up to the point that you steamroll most cards anyway, so. That's that. Are you seeing that? You are. All right, so, uh, just in the interest of least playedness, what's least played? 
and let's do a single player game. I have not played too many single player games because I've been trying to double up on heroes for the sake of uh, expanding on the progression sheets. But I also think that one player one deck dungeon is harder than two player one deck dungeon. So let's go with harder. And it's Mist that's the least played, and that makes sense because Mist is newer. What's the least played dungeon? Uh, Hellhound Indrax. Looks like. Both of them have about equivalent global stats, other than the fact that Indrax is lesser played, slightly. But it's still six versus five. Yeah, so Hellhound, Indrax, and Mist. Who, um... Oh, we can... Oh, yeah, we don't have a focus, but yeah. Okay, um... Hellhound is this one, right? In Cinder Plains? Yep. And Indrax is... Lair of Indrax. <laughs> okay, I guess that makes sense. Lair of Indrax. Discard all threes rolled, and that applies to him and the dungeon. That's certainly dreadful. Whereas Cinder Plains spends time when a potion is spent and places damage on a hero after exploring, and dice spent to convert to a heroic die are exiled. Hmm. Let's do the Lair of the Indrax, just because having discarded numbers certainly makes games interesting and mist um this is not two player mist so we can't double up on magic spells as often but her her, her heroic her heroic feat is ridiculous store a heroic die here when you use a mana skill which can double up in a single turn and you may store up to two dice at a time so she will have ridiculous amounts of heroic dice uh so having a Basic skill that uses mana is probably desirable. Um, reducing the difficulty of each armor box by one. There are armors on the boss, just saying. Reducing these by one at the cost of three ether. I don't know if it's necessarily worth it, though. But making this a four agility and five agility might be nice. Lessens the need for agility. Especially because we're discarding all threes, so we need to be careful with numbers. Uh, and there is an armor box there, but it's on perils, and this is a combat skill. Now let's try that. Because, like, Force Bolt is certainly ridiculous by itself, whereas uh, Piercing Blast is more... Um, more... Situational, that word. Uh, there's lots of poison on the boss. Let's stick with the forest deck so that a poison roll removes poison tokens. And I always like using aid. Uh, let's not do the reroll skill. And rewind would save me in a pinch. Actually, let's use Rewind. That seems pretty nice. If something goes horribly wrong, uh, we won't win the ca we won't win the fight, but we'll win the war. <laughs> All right. So Miss versus the Lair of Indrax, or versus the Indrax in the Lair of Indrax. Let's go. All right. So her prep, by the way, and we found this out. Um. Spend up to six ether, replace this with Chaos Arc. What Chaos Arc does is it's an auto skill, I believe. So you can use it immediately. And it allows you to either use the dice on the card or increase them by three. So if you prep and then Chaos Arc, you get threes for free. Oh, not free free. But if you prep it and then use the auto skill to increase them to sixes, you'll have sixes for the next round. Which, by the way, sixes on here, I would appreciate. 
What is an Indrax anyway? Uh, judging by the art of the card, looks like a dragon. <laughs> it's a dragon. But then again, there's also a dragon in Dragon's Cave, so uh, maybe it's not a dragon dragon, but uh, something that looks like a dragon. This is not necessarily good for the mist. She has lots of mana, but not strength or agility. Uh, is it? Should we just do it, even with all the consequences? Arr. What's this? We get an agility item, or we get balance attack, but that costs two strength. And it's also a roll skill, so I'm very wary of roll skills in this game. <laughs> Uh, the agility item would help with this fight, ironically. Yeah, I'm not going to fight it. So, like, if I clear a path and I fail it, I take two damage and two poison. Um, although, I mean, there's a small chance I could actually cover up the five. So it'd be two damage and one poison. Let's just avoid that. Let's just avoid that. <sighs> well, Bramblefield... And the piercing potion. I really want that piercing potion. Especially early on. Uh, it would allow me it would allow me to just outright ignore the armors. Uh, which isn't as strong against the Indrax as it was against another fight we did with Migrant P like two weeks ago. But or was it four weeks ago? I don't remember. I know John was on my stream recently. I don't remember which week it was, but um, I would still like I would still take consequences in this case, so it's not as potent. But I mean, one poison and one damage is rather negligible, so I could kind of ignore the agility a little more once I get this potion. So. It's especially annoying, though, that this is the second Bramble Field. But the other one has the leaf icon, which means that if I do take poison, I can succeed a poison roll a little more easily thanks to the leaf. Yeah, and when I gain a potion, uh, Cure will also heal me. So it's one fewer damage than actually stated. So let's go ahead... Um, I don't think I want four poison, though. No, that's kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to take the time. I'm going, I'm going to hopefully roll lucky. I did not roll lucky. But I intentionally took consequences there. <laughs> so. Skip the use heroics feats step. Okay. Uh, lots of mana here. Holy crud. Uh, I can't cover all of these boxes. Spend an agility to gain a, a, a heroic four. Strength. Experience. Um, I probably will not be able to cover... I mean, I absolutely cannot cover up all the boxes. Absolutely, I cannot. <laughs> and I can't use piercing blast because there's no... No uh, armor boxes in this encounter. But I could prep, but then I won't have enough mana for anything else. But we've opened three doors, and we haven't been able to really deal with these appropriately enough. What is it? Three damage, two poison, and seven time. The poison will add up. Um, to what degree can we avoid the other consequences? I don't know, let's, we, we, we have to enter something. We have to get something from something. So let's just deal with it. We can avoid a time. We can avoid a damage. And I can prep. Yeah, let's prep. And what do I want? Uh, we have one fewer strength die than agility. So maybe more strengths. And yeah, I can add three to each dice stored here or gain the dice and replace this with prep, which cannot be used this turn. But uh, let's increase them by three. And now when I use this next turn, this will be ridiculous. 
It was also a mana skill, so I gained a heroic die. Good. Good. Very good. And now it's two hearts, two poisons, six time. Ew. Do I want to just rewind? Uh, so, <laughs> like, do I need these things? <laughs> is, is, is rewinding worth more to me than two damage, two poison, and six time? Or, well, rewinding... Uh, mm, yeah, I don't want to spend all those consequences. Uh, so, we have used rewind. <laughs> I did that just to prep up Chaos Arc. That's the kind of person I am. Stone Skin, that's a skill I can use to increase focus. Uh, piercing would have been great in this encounter, fun fact. Spend time for each poison in the party. Well... Mm, that's not good. I'm going to spend two times straight up, and then I have to cover these boxes. Which Chaos Arc will give me two of those for free, I guess. Uh, Piercing Blast would reduce them by one. Hmm. I'm not really happy with these. <laughs> uh, let's enter. Let's focus. Let's roll. Okay. We have a six. Uh, we do need Chaos Arcs. We cannot use prep this turn. Uh, so we're going to be one off from being able to really use it to its maximum potential. Uh, if I want to get a focus back, I'm going to need to use Piercing Blast. Which I could do with these twos, maybe. Let's, let's do that for a second and see if I want to actually do that. And I can put a two on that one, but this four can go there. And, okay. And that goes there. And... Um... This is a little dilemma here. Three time versus one time and a heart, or two time versus one heart, basically. I think two time is better. Although we spent a lot of time already. But we really need to get more items, I think. I Stone skin is a mana skill, prevents damage. Uh, can be useful. Allows me to ignore certain consequences. Also charges up focus, which gives me a heroic die, which is better than the strength dice. Well, you get stone skin. So as I was saying, we're going to get stone skin. <laughs> All right. And if I leave this here, I can have an easier poison roll. All right. So now let's hope that we can do better. Uh, not mana. Fireball, however, is really good. Um, if I evade the thorns and fail, uh, two damage, two poison, one time, and then another poison. Urgh, I don't like that fourth poison. If I focus just so I'm more likely to cover the five, is that really stupid? <laughs> or I strike down, but I'm also not going to do that. But I'm replacing one damage with two time. Actually, three time, because strike down has a one time upfront cost. Ugh. I'm going to enter just because I'm stubborn. I'm not going to use my focus. That feels like a waste. I got a five anyway. All right. It's one less poison. Good. But now I have fireball. Look at all these skills I have that I'm not really able to afford, but I'm pretending that I can afford them. I have another fireball here that I could have gotten instead. Okay. All right. Um, I think this is this. We fought this guy 
in a different way. This has a leaf, though. Let's flee so I have a leaf, because about three poison I'm not happy with. Ah, what is with all these perils that aren't mana? Ah. Uh, luck. Sure. But that's, I don't really like that luck potion. Uh, agility item. But again, this is a situation. Oh, this is a leaf. All right, let's flee. <laughs> this is a ridiculous waste of time. But let's flee so that this poison roll is trivial. Good. Spent four time for a trivial poison roll. Not really the best. Oh, look. I can use a mana thing here, and this is a luck potion again. Wow, a lot of reiteration here. If I can actually do something. Four dice. Eh. All right, covered it all. That's all that matters. And I'll take the agility item, and now I can start considering running through or dodging vines. Um, or Ice Room. Let's do Ice Room. So I can Fireball. I could do that with a three. I can Stone Skin. Um, and I could ignore the four if I do that. Fireball doesn't really... Like, the strength doesn't do anything directly. But I could make a heroic five. There's a six. That probably should just go there. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do a two and a three. Because the two and a three by themselves aren't going to do too much. Or anything. Let's do the two and the three. Um, so, or I guess the two and the three could have also gone to this, although I would have spent a five to get that. I don't know. Let's undo that for a second. Um, and that six was there. Five there, and then five, two. And then I have a three here for stone skin. I don't know that that was actually better, but that felt like I did something. <laughs> Um, and then I can heroic and cover the 10. So now it's only two time and consequences. Which I can't reduce without losing something else. Uh, oh, actually I can reduce it one time. <laughs> there we go. I'm I'm happy with only one time. It doesn't really do anything for me though. But now I have a strength item. Okay, so with one player, it's one item, two skills. So I have two skills. I now have two items. So I'm using up crafty. Uh, this is start of turn, so I'm gonna stay here. Actually, not necessarily stay here, but um. I should be able to do either the Vine Trap or the Bramble Field now. It's not going to do me too good, though, but it will give me experience. We have three dice, three agility dice. I don't want Balance Attack, and Luck isn't going to do me anything. Yeah, so I don't want those skills. And the item's not better than anything I have right here, so this would just be for experience. So let's go to Vine Trap, because the one time there doesn't matter. I'm rolling three dice. Uh, so if I do one die here, this should make it a lot easier. So I got the five there, I just need to roll seven with these. And I rolled enough to not need this five. Oh well, that was for safety. All right, so I like to be at level two when I descend. Unfortunately, I am not, because we've had some bad breaks. If you fail a, po a resist poison roll, do not remove a poison token. All right, so we have to be careful with that. Speaking of being careful with that, I'm going to fail a poison roll just to show that mechanic. <laughs> See, that's how you fail a poison roll. All right. Hmm. I'm at my item limit, on my skill limit, devastate. 
is devastating. Um... Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's not worry about it, let's focus. We're gonna win or we're not gonna win. We'll find out after we roll the dice. And we're off to a great start with these dice rolls. They look really saucy. Okay, uh, fireball. I don't have dice for prep really, which is tragic. And I don't have good agilities. My heroic was bad. I don't have six. There's a lot of awful happening here. I can barely cover the 10. Although Piercing Blast would reduce that by one, so I wouldn't need the Heroic die, but I don't know what else to do. Can I even survive this? This doesn't look too good. I can cover the seven. I can take less time. That is not keeping me alive. I can't rewind. I don't have that. I can prep. And that would... I can get three Strength Threes out of that. That's really all I can do there. That would reduce my consequences by two. And I can stone skin. That would reduce this five to a four. Um, oh, but in order to be able to do that, I would need to like, okay, well, time doesn't matter if I'm gonna die anyway. So let's just remove that. My agility roll was just so bad. If I had rolled a single four with agility, this would be a lot better. But I, even then, like, this is just awful. So let's... Let's lose this match and let's uh, start the next round. Because I don't think I can salvage this. I just, I can't work with this at all. <laughs> all right, well, that was fun. We, we gained a Pentagon. Uh, Pentagons are nice. Um, we're working on aggression. Yep, we'll do that. And let's just try again. I lost so quickly, I wanna try again. I just feel like we didn't get any good encounters that were made for mist though. But maybe I'm wrong, like disarm. That would have been so nice if I had started with that. Or not disarm, but rune circle. Because I can get this mana item rather easily. I can't get that skill as easily. I shouldn't say easily. It's likely, but... Yeah, we got it. And now we have one more mana die. And that makes things so much easier now. We can also bolster. Look at these cards I never saw! <laughs> Well, we're going to bolster for sure. We got the five, and we got ridiculous dice anyway. We can take the strength die. We can get barrage. Barrage isn't going to help, and it's a roll skill. I don't like the roll skills in this dungeon. All right, so now we have two strength, two, ma two agility, five mana. Add poison to the consequences for each five die on this card, so that is going to have to be a concern, but... Uh, we should survive it, so I'm going to go and fight it and roll terrible mana. And we have a five. That's not good. We have a four and a three. We have a three. Uh, and I can... I can't do anything with heroics here, but I also can't cover the seven with this. Or if I do that, then I only have... Poison is better than damage. Um, it's not the best prep, but it's something. Uh, I don't think getting those threes would be too useful, so I'm going to just accept these consequences. Um, I kind of feel like I'm flying really quickly, but... Oh, I already have an extra. Okay, I see. Well, even though this is a roll skill, 
Well, three experience is nice. I usually like going for skills first, but six experience is all I need for a heroic die. This at least can take a ma take an agility turn into an agility four, and that strength die does have a chance of getting discarded, but it's at least uh, extra versus the direct focus. Now we have one heroic die. This is not a good encounter. We can focus if we want. Uh, but I don't really like that potion. I don't like that experience. So let's just keep the leaf to make this roll easier. And barely succeed. I shroom, so I can't use focus. Exploit weakness is sort of like finesse, but not 100%. Uh, this might be doable. Uh, <laughs> my worst agility is a four. Well, might as well use it. I don't think it would hurt. I have a six. I have a four. I have something for the three, but I don't know if I would rather have it there or in the ten slot. I could chaos arc. I don't know if that's worth it. I can't cover the... Mana for directly, uh, but we could get a heroic out of this. Yeah, let's chaos arc so that I used it. And now I can use prep next time to get more focuses. So now I can cover the 10 trivially, and I can get a heroic to cover the four, and there's no consequences. That seems good. And yeah, let's take exploit weakness. That heroic, hero, that heroic four, heroic, hero, I keep saying heroic, heroic, hero. Ooh, flame walk. Hello. I want that. I don't care what will happen. I want that. <laughs> it's mine. And that might. Well, no, okay, the, the the agility is atrocious, except we're putting that into finesse anyway, although it's not going to cover the five or the six, although we do have a, a, a heroic. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we have a heroic six. We have strength fours. We have lots of, uh, uh, lots of mana. We would like to use some on prep if we can. Hero. Heroic. Heroic. Uh, that's 15. That's 8. Um, I would kind of like to prep, though. There's nothing I can really replace unless I just... If I take one more poison, is that going to be terrible? Is that greedy? It's either one more poison or three time. Let's take one more poison. I'm greedy. If I lose this, it's because of this. But having these sixes here is going to be really nice. Uh, that was not what I wanted to do. Yeah, let's do that. I want that flame walk skill. That's why I did this. Um, and I kind of want volumes of dice more than heroics. All right, poison cloud. We can do spark is a nice one because that will give us this will give us an ability we can use in in perils, so we can charge up focus that way. Uh, I'm not going to use focus here, though. But we will be able to get a self-sustaining focus. And it levels me up. Good. Good, good, good. Um, 
I will assume I will roll a three or higher. <laughs> uh, let's see. Three or higher, three or higher. I got a six. That's three or higher. All right. Rune circle. I can do this. Like, without thinking. Uh, and I will probably want the item. Uh, I don't need to focus. I can spark almost easily. And by almost easily, I mean easily. <laughs> and that's that. I'll take mana. We really want mana now. We have flame block and spark. Rockworm. There's lots of mana there. That's fine. Uh, some strength. Well, we can chaos arc if we need to. Flame walk and spark so I can focus up immediately. Well, let's just roll all of these. Okay. Um. So let's put six there. Let's put three here. So we got our two heroics back. We have a five for that. We have a five for that. We have 12 for that. We have seven for that. We have 12 for that. Just place your dice. All right. Uh, we already are at six mana. More mana, though, is really good. But Faint, I also kind of like, but we don't have the agility to support it. But we do want to have agility sixes for the Indrax. I'm going to take the skill. Oh, boy. This is not mana. Um Do I need precise blow for Indrax? Not really. I mean I need a strength four, but flame walk gets me that. Agility six, flame walk, and faint give me. Spark isn't necessarily the best for Indrax, because if I roll a three it's discarded, but that would if I don't roll a three, then the four is almost certainly covered. There's a one out of six chance the four is not covered, and a one out of six chance that the three is rolled and discarded. So I don't really need precise blow. Um, do I want that agility item? That would power up faint. I would just have to focus, really, to pass this encounter with no consequences. Um, but then I won't have the focus for the next round. But let's do that. It's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Uh, except I can't cover the nine. That's less fine. I find this less fine. It's okay. I'll just take more poison. Four poison, no big deal. Uh, so there's a 50% chance that I will fail this poison roll if I try for it right now. Uh, but fail or not, I'll have less poison, so let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. I failed it. All right, well, there we go. I have two damage. I'm gonna stay on the floor and check this door out. I don't care for Vine Trap right now. We have the Great Spirit, Display Prowess, Reroll a Die, Gain a Heroic One. Don't like that. Mana item, but I have to struggle free. Eh, let's Display Prowess, because we can do it without thinking. Just make sure I use Spark to get our Heroic back. And then I can cover up all the squares. Can't use any other mana skill, all right. Uh, at my skill limit, uh, but I can get the experience. I don't want to lose Flame Walk. Spark, I think, is fine. That Heroic 1 could fund Faint. But I don't really like the reroll aspect of this. I'll just take the experience. Oh, 
Four. Four. That's a four. If I fail that, I wouldn't have removed a poison token, so it's good that I didn't fail it. And this is a leaf, and this is basically the same fight as before. Uh, literally the same fight as before. Not even a slightly different encounter as before. It's literally the same. <laughs> Usually these aren't the exact same skills but and items, but these are the exact same skills and items. The only slight difference is that this one doesn't have a leaf on it, but this one does. Uh, do I want to do this? I mean, now we have a five armor, so it is actually slightly harder, but uh, we can charge up focus without having to worry about it, really. We're not discarding dice yet, so it should be fine. That gets me a five. I have to, co have to cover the five first. And there we go. And I still don't want that skill, so I'll take the experience. Bramble field. Not mana. Uh, we don't care for balance attack. And I could replace my agility, except it won't matter at all. I'll level up and then be at zero. The level up, however, is fine. And the level up means I can kind of ignore some of the consequences. But I would say probably clearing a path is better. Even though I have one fewer strength die. Because I'm going to focus twice. Um... Actually, no, if I run through, like, I can, I could probably do this encounter if I focus twice and run through. I'll have six dice. It's unlikely that I won't roll any fives, so of course I won't roll any fives. I barely rolled a five. <laughs> I will take one poison. I'm not happy about that poison, but I can't do anything about it now. And I don't want the skill, so I'll take the experience, and I can heal. And I'm just going to be brave and assume that I will not take poison damage. Rope bridge. I can bolster easily. Uh, it doesn't have a leaf, so I'm just going to fight it. I'm a bolster. I'm going to roll my dice. I'm going to spark. I'm going to cover my squares. All right, and I'll take that agility item. That funds faint, and it will give me more options and perils. That's a leaf. So I actually don't want to fight this, because this will help with the poison roll. Uh, normally, I would fight it right now, because I'm not, I'm not spending any time, because there's no other open doors, but or no, no closed doors. But I want to have an easier poison roll. So that I can fail it and and feel bad. <laughs> oh well. Convert a poison on a hero to damage. I do not like what is going on here. I feel like I'm falling for a trap. But it's a combat, so I should do it because I can flame walk and spark and get my focus back. Um That was not a six. I do have a heroic six, though. I have to cover those first. I don't know that I had to do that, but that does do something. Still have to cover the eight. Um, and I can ignore a damage, but none of these are singletons, so... Let's get heroics going. Uh, except I can't. Uh, unless I discard a focus one. Mm. That's annoying.
Um, do I want poison? <laughs> Actually, I could just take time, right? One time is fine. I want to leave my extra focus die there. We're doing fine. We're already in level 3 on floor 2, so it's not any issue. I don't want blitz, because that will be a roll skill. Let's just take more mana. When in doubt, take more mana. Alright, you cannot place heroics on dungeon challenge boxes, meaning the ones on the right. Brawn potion... At my atom limit. Do I care about the brawn potion? I do need strength. Maybe I'll take the brawn potion because that would heal me. And it would give me more strength for the boss without having to pick up strength items. So we'll consider that. I have something for Spark. And yeah, I don't think I need all these twos. I have something for Faint. So. I cannot put heroics on the right, so the priority should be uh, to put non heroics on the right. So. Uh, strength isn't that ideal, because <laughs> I can't cover... Oh, actually, never mind, that's eight. Never mind, I thought... I can't... I thought that was seven. Don't ask me why I thought that was seven. I thought it was seven. It was definitely not seven. <laughs> All right, everything's covered. I'll take the potion so I can heal. Um, let's open this door. It's a leaf. Uh, I shouldn't need two leaves because that would just trivialize the poison roll. Uh, flyover is trivial. Clever smash, roll a strength and me discard it to gain a heroic three. Or, or at my item limit. I mean, I'm not really happy about the roll skills, but it's an auto skill, so it's free. So it's better than nothing. And I can roll one of these because I'll spark and get another one. And let's put the two and the one in there for whatever reason. It gets me a five, and there's a five there, and then we cover these. Excellent. Um, let's let's explore. All right, poison roll done. Stay on the floor. Probably won't be able to take on the goblin. Dice may not be re-rolled or increased. Well, that makes Spark a little less nice. But we will do it nonetheless. Really good agility roll. Um, that, oh, right, yeah, that could have been problematic, but I rolled a six anyway, <laughs> and that's something for that, something for that, 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 six, three, eight, and then seven. And everything's covered. We have exploit weakness again. We have a strength item. Or more. We have more agility, but at the same time, we can get more strength from skills indirectly. So I don't really want that item. And exploit weakness is that better than clever smash or faint? No, I kind of like those skills. Not really like clever smash 100%. Uh, but this one's auto. This one costs an agility. I'm just going to take the experience. 
Uh, if I stay on this floor, I will take damage, but I can open two doors. How do I feel about taking damage to open two doors? Um, if I take damage to open two doors and then I descend and I fail the poison roll, then I die. If I descend now and I fail the poison roll, I uh, stay alive, but barely. Uh, so let's just descend. I'm already well on my way to level four, so it's fine. Of course. Of course. Adept. Kind of a boring skill, but it's only two mana. But it's not a good roll skill. Especially now we're on floor two. Or floor three. So threes from this point forward will auto discard. So if I only roll threes, they're all gone. That was kind of a many, uh, kind of way too many threes. Kind of way too many threes. Okay, I'm going to keep that one. Um, definitely that. I don't have a good set for faint. I can cover those squares. I can use spark, but I would lose mana. I guess like we don't need that much mana anymore. Actually, everything's covered. Okay. So do that so I get my heroic back. Okay. Yeah, experience. Or, well, yeah, experience. Oh boy, an encounter where volumes of dice matter more, uh, which is not good when dice get discarded. But we'll fight you. We'll fight you. We at least can chaos arc for some. Oh boy. Yeah, discard that for sure. And even though volumes matter more, these two ones aren't doing me anything. And I guess I'm not really going to flame walk. It might still be fine to spark, though, unless this is a three. Uh, it was not a three. Okay. So now I have to be quite careful. <laughs> that can be covered. I don't want any more poison. Poison's been bad. Uh, twos can technically be covered. I don't know if I will cover the twos. Uh, we do have lots of good heroics. Okay, that's actually really good heroics. Um, and if I throw into that flame walk, I can recover some of these. Like, uh... Yeah, that six was not really doing anything, but if I throw it into Flame Walk, it gets me a six. It gives me agility that covers the three. It gives me a mana that covers that three. And it gives me a strength five, which doesn't really do much of anything. But that's better than that six just going into a, that slot. Um. One time is better than two time. <laughs> you know what's better than one time? Two time. I don't like this one. Surely there's something I can do with this one. I've used up all my skills. Um... I mean, that also works. <laughs> uh, I need to have two dice in here anyway to actually cover that. 
So it's not really doing me any good to like shuffle those numbers around. And I need, I need to have two numbers, two dice in all of these. So like I already have the dice there. The issue is just this one can't really do anything. What it could have done was cover this up with the six, but then I wouldn't have had enough dice otherwise. Because that four was pushed over here, right? So it's not like I lost a die by doing that. There's no way I can really use this one, I don't think. But as annoying as it is that this one is not doing me anything, I would either have to use Chaos Arc or Brawn in order for this to work out. So spending only one time is fine. It's not worth spending more time than that. <laughs> not worth spending real time to try to save in-game time. Do I want the Piercing Potion to ignore all armor icons in this encounter? It will give me a potion. Um, and yeah, I guess with faint and with the armor potion, I don't worry about that six anymore. Maybe? I don't know. I'll just take it. And I will assume that I will not fail the poison roll. That has a leaf on it, so I'm just going to flee and leave it there. And fight the other goblin instead. Yeah, sure. Three is discarded. Good start. Two threes. Three threes. Three threes. And of course. Oh. Oh. I can just discard you. Yes. You're going to get discarded anyway. So I'm just going to discard you to actually gain something out of that. That sounds better to me. All right. We do have a, a mana six. Um, let's throw into spark. Gets me a six. Throw in a flame walk. All right. Agility. There's lots of sixes there. No single heart box. So I don't know that faint is going to do too much good because we already have all good agilities. And obviously the issue is covering up that nine. We can do it with that, but then we still have to worry about the strength. That seven is covered, and now we have excess mana that can turn into a heroic. Um, but that doesn't do me too much good. Uh, and I'm already maxed out on heroics. So that one would be discarded. But if that one's going to get discarded, is there a way I can... Yeah, I can just take this five and throw it into faint. And then I can get a heroic here. And that would be only one damage. But I would like to not take that damage. Uh, which I could do with this. And I need to have two dice there. I've not used Chaos Arc in a while. Um, probably should consider using it because, like, these dice are just sitting here, but they're also fine to just save for the boss. And, yeah, those dice would make the first round of the boss pretty simple. So I'm fine with just leaving it there until I figure out a better place to use it. All right, so trivial poison roll. Good job. You did it. You succeeded an unfailable poison roll. <laughs> Spend time for each poison in the party. There is none. Ooh, there's a three. There's there's threes. Several threes. And we definitely want a heroic three instead. Let's hope that this spark works. Good enough. Uh, we don't have good mana. 
Don't have a mana six. That would kind of have to go there for that. If we do that, I'm not sure if we will, but let's just see. Uh, this seems like a good time for faint, or do I do I want to do that? I don't know. Yeah, let's do that, because then I don't have to cover the strength five, if I can. Um, yeah, here we have a bit of a shortage, and those armors are stuck, and... That would cover that box, but I would still have that six there. Uh, this is actually a good time for Chaos Arc, I would say. Let's go ahead and Chaos Arc. Um, this will avoid damage, which I want to avoid. Seriously. <laughs> uh, there we go. Remember I said I was not going to use Chaos Arc? I was going to save for the boss. <laughs> All right. Pulverize. Uh, roll a heroic die and then increase it by one. I don't like roll skills. So we'll just take the experience because that will level me up. Now I have two heroic dice. Heroic dice. So that's fine. Spend time for each six rolled. Not a good time to find this guy. I don't think I want to fight you even though you give a mana die. Because if I roll a bunch of sixes, I will take damage. I will just flee. I will stay on the floor, though. Do I want to fight the goblin? Blitz? Uh, not. I, this does increase a die by one, though. Even if the die, if the strength die itself gets discarded, and it does give me a mana die, which you cannot have enough mana with mist. Yeah, we'll fight you. Actually, no. Let's go in here because I can do this and then fight you. Yeah. This will be fine. I can have seven items. I'm at six, but I can hold one more. Yeah, so I can get a strength item and a mana item and be fine. I don't need awareness for the boss, and I didn't need whatever skill the goblin had. So I need to avoid putting heroics, heroics on this card. If I can manage that. Those are threes. I think this is a faint. Uh, let's hope that spark doesn't fail. Spark failed. I could flame rock if I do this. Because I gotta keep that six if I can. I do have to worry about prep at some point because I don't have the safety net anymore. I don't want to take the time. I also don't want to take the damage. Yeah, we do have that heroic. That's the thing, but... Um, if I use piercing, I can move these strengths over there. Braun would possibly also do that. The problem is I wouldn't have this covered at all. I mean, if I take two... Like, I don't have to fight the goblin, right? Would reducing this by one help? Probably not, because I have to keep these things where they are. Yeah, that's not going to help. Um, let's piercing and then move this and then not fight the goblin. All right, descent. This will be easy. I'll just discard all my dice. You know, when I said that, I was kidding. Okay, so six there, and we could ignore poison icons. Uh, not sure yet if I'm going to do that. 
Hmm. I probably will do that because my strength is terrible. Yeah, let's do that. There is three hearts there, though. I'm not happy about that. And yes, there is also Spark, but that could be a discard. And there's Flame Walk, but that's an expense of mana. Um, but we're probably going to need it. It's pretty clear we're not going to get that 20 covered this round. Pretty clear. Unless I... Well, no. Bronze not going to do it either. Like, this... I need I need 14 more. Bronze not going to do it. Unless I do it twice, but I kind of want to save it. Um... Do I want to prep? Because I, I don't have this covered. Unless... Okay, no. The plan was, I guess, to make a heroic... That makes that 23. I can now put three into prep. And I can't really do any better than that. Unless I spark and I get a six. Well, 50% chance of the six. And then there's a one six chance I just discard the die. Uh, why did I have to say it? Okay. Uh, so... I kind of I, I really want to prep because then I could have three strength threes or three strength sixes for the next round, which is really my only stumbling block. Because flame walk and faint will guarantee that I have the agility basically covered. But I can't afford that unless I use brawn. But in any case, this fight is going to take two more rounds anyway because he's taking three damage and I could do four if I had this covered but that would require that would require lucky bronze really well actually I can't even do it right now unless I use all three of my bronze let's just not do that um, and let's not do prep because I can't I'm, I, I can try to do it next round anyway Okay, that's a bit that's a lot better mana roll. Okay. Uh strength four versus heroic three. I'm gonna leave that there because that can go directly into the box. This can go directly into the box. This can go there. Faint gives me a six. Flame walk gives me a six. So the agility is covered. My strength is not there yet. Uh, and other than Spark... Um, I don't know if that's technically better, but I get a 6 out of that. Uh, but I don't really want to throw a 6 in the Spark. That's useless. <laughs> um... And I guess if I put a three in a piercing blast. Um, <laughs> oh, I can take a six out of that. No, I can't. Uh, I'm trying to make this 19, but I don't think you can make it 19. Um... Yeah, I can't make that 19. Actually, that's 19. <laughs> uh, is that worth? Probably not. It would mean I only need to put a six in here, but to get that six, That wouldn't do it. I 
And we do have potions here, by the way. Uh, so, and we also want to consider prep as well, now that we do have mana this time. So let's... Make that 20. Um... Yeah, Braun is probably going to be fair here. It will give me a strength three for sure. All right. That gives me a 20 as well. As well. Uh, I got to put those in and now I can cover these. Now all the boxes are covered. So I can safely prep. Uh, oh. Oh. Ow. Ow. Uh, I can get a heroic. Yeah, I can still do a heroic. I can ditch this two. And now I, I will have enough. Okay. So I can do that. And then I will add three to them. And now the next roll will win. Nothing else. I mean, yeah, we, we have everything covered. I don't need to do anything else here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, that was exciting. Um, again, most of my mana went. I will... Ooh. Not necessarily keep that, actually. Uh, we already have the strength covered. So I'm actually going to discard that so I get a heroic. And then faint. And now that... Well, okay, no, that should not be that. Uh, actually, that five doesn't do me anything either. <sighs> Yeah, we're going to we're going to take those threes for sure. There's no way around that. And spark would be a gamble, but I kind of need better mana. Okay, that was better mana. Uh that gives me 20. That covers that. And I will take one poison. No, I don't have to take one poison. I mean, it. I, I've won, but now I want to do better. <laughs> so let's sacrifice that six, because I can get a heroic out of these things. That gives me what I need there, and then I get a heroic that fits in there. And now there's no consequences this round. So now, just so I have a flawless victory, I'm going to drink potions. <laughs> there, no damage on mist at all. All the damage to Indrax, and we have won. Wuzu, wuzu, wuzu. I don't know why wuzu. Okay, let's get fearlessness. That is a really good skill that uh, gives you a heroic die on combats, which makes early game a lot easier. We have five check marks remaining, so I can't get any of these other ones. Uh, so let's just throw them two there and three there. Uh, I could also do it the other way around. Which one do I want more? Blind luck. I kind of like that. It can be used in perils cheaply and it in combats or perils. You can use it to fund a skill that needs a die of a certain color. So that's okay. I'll accept that. Uh, I'm trying to fill out aggression right now because I really like the fearlessness talent, skill, focus, word. I don't know what it's technically called again. Um, we have healing on like everyone else. And I liked healing at the time, but I feel like aggression works out a lot better. And all of these are pretty nice. Uh, dungeon ones, these ones are all peril ones, which... I've, I've kind of, like, 
come around a lot on how I view peril only skills because the thing about perils is you have so few dice so almost any skill is great cunning changing a five into a six not really the best because you don't really need sixes too many too often in perils unless it's a square a dungeon square thing speed ignore one time even a choice cost I mean that makes choice costs that involve time a bit easier to want to take although I take them anyway and foresight, reroll one of your dice. I don't really like reroll skills, but rerolling a one generally can't be bad. Unless you discard the die, like in this encounter, or in this dungeon. Um. Yeah, so all of these have niche uses. Fearlessness, however, is probably the best one, honestly. I can't really imagine a scenario where rolling a heroic die in a combat wouldn't be bad. <laughs> so I'm going to just focus on aggression. But we have successfully done another match with the mist, uh, even though we technically did two with mist. So we gained a loss and we gained a victory and we gained a loss. We gained a victory on Indrax. That's fine. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you got some insight into Aeon's End or One Deck Dungeon gameplay, as I like to be able to do for you. If you like watching these games, you should follow this channel, Handelabra Games, because we showcase a lot of content from Handelabra products. And on Tuesdays at 7, you get a stream from two developers, John and sometimes Jeremy, who will show you content before it is publicly available. Every Friday, or not Friday anymore, every Thursday at 7, you get Dolphin Dive where you get some strategy streams and discussion to the mechanics of the game and ways you could perhaps try to improve your game. On Saturdays at 8 p.m., you get On Deck with Pirate Savvy and Dover, a brother-sister duo who have some entertainment and uh, entertaining streams and very entertaining. <laughs> and on Sunday at 7 p.m., you get Tales from the Archive with another lit down for some storytelling sentinels. If you enjoy watching these games and you want to get them yourself, be sure to consider doing that. Um... Oh, that actually... Uh, nope, don't open up YouTube. Uh, <laughs> that actually opens up a YouTube video. I did not know that. Uh, I don't know if this is a news ticker or if it... I don't remember what it all says in here and I can't really seem to change it too easily. Can I click that mouse? No? Okay. Uh, but uh, I don't remember if it's still happening, but there was a lunar sale. Um, I'm not sure how long that lunar sale was for, but if it's still going on, you should check out the games. If it's not going on, you can still check out the games. The base games are actually relatively cheap. One deck dungeon at base is rather cheap. Even physically, it's really cheap. And Sentinels of the Multiverse at base is really cheap. I don't remember how much Aeon's End is, but it's certainly worth it. All three of the games that I play on this stream are worth it. And you should check them out if you like strategy games. Uh, if you want to get the physical games, you can certainly get them through uh, Greater Than Games for Sentinels of the Multiverse and uh, Asmati Games for One Deck Dungeon. And I do not remember who the developer is for Aeon's End, but you can find that on... Uh, you can certainly find more information on that at handelabro.com. Playing physically... While you have to track everything, sometimes it's more fun to play that with uh, people. With <laughs> people. With humans. <laughs> uh, but some people enjoy it more. Uh, but if you want to play it digitally, it's right here. Easy to play. Don't have to really follow all of the rules to play it. Because the game will do all of the tracking for you, which is really nice. If you like me as a person, oh, thank you. Uh, you can follow my stream at twitch.tv slash Dolphin. And you can also follow my Twitter at Lou 